Hey there, Mr. Olson here. Substitution, substitution is our uh, thing all throughout this video. It's all about substitution. Yeah. Um, so warm up, substitute the variables, then simplify. Substituting, and we'll go on definition of this in a second, but you should be kind of familiar with this. You replace each letter with the numbers that it's equal to, and then simplify it. Pause the video. Okay, we're back. So, problem number one, you need to replace the A with the four, the B with the three, and the C with the two. And so that gives you a set. The four plus three is a seven, subtract the two, five. Uh, problem number two, we have D minus, in parentheses, E plus F. So we have 11 minus, in parentheses, five plus eight. Um, do the five plus eight first because it's in parentheses. So 11 minus 13, and that equals negative two. Problem number three, five G plus H. So we put in a 2 for g, uh, sometimes you can put parentheses, and that's good, but the key thing is that it's being multiplied, not anything else. Because I, I sometimes see students that put it in parentheses, but they're not sure what those parentheses mean. That means you're multiplying it, plus 9. In fact, I sometimes see kids that put everything that they substitute in parentheses, and that's not a bad habit. I mean, it's actually a pretty good habit. Um, that way, for situations where you need to have those parentheses, you have them. It's not every situation that you need that, though. So, 5 times 2, that's 10. 10 plus 9, 19. Again, whether you put the parentheses or not, the key thing is to know that that's 5 times g. Number 4, try that one on your own. Let's do 5 and 6, I'll go over with you. 3 times k plus m, so it would have 3 times in parentheses, 4 plus 2. And there's really two ways you could uh, deal with this. One, add the 4 and the 2 together, giving you 6, so 3 times 6, and that's 18. Two, multiply the 3 by the 4 and the 3 by the 2, distribute it. So 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 2 is 6, add those, you get 18. I like this better because it takes less multiplication. Here you do one addition, then one multiplication. Here you do two multiplications, and then one addition. Uh, really, really, you could take your pick on that. It could go either way. Problem number 6, NP minus QR. So N is 3. Here's where parentheses really might come in handy. As long as you remember that parentheses next to other parentheses or next to other numbers means multiply. So 3 times 7, 21, 5 times 6, 30. I've had some kids that just write 37 minus 56, and that is wrong. You do not just put the number next to the number and turn it into a two-digit number. Does not work that way, never works that way. Well, almost never. Okay, um, hardly ever. Today's objectives, we learned how to solve systems of equations by substitution. It's going to be great, it's going to be a heck of a thing. Class business, box tops, anybody have box tops? No, apparently, because no one's here. Uh, anybody leaving for the end of class period? No? Oh, no one's here. Great, so no one's leaving. Quizzes, please make up any quizzes that you have that, whether it's that you're not, not happy with the score or that you missed entirely. Please make sure you keep up to date on your quizzes that you have none missing or none that are bringing down your grade. New quarter. It is a new quarter. I am counting the last two grades from the previous quarter on this quarter's grade. So the last two sets of notes go on this quarter's grade. New quarter. Also, the last quiz we had last quarter go on this quarter's grade. If you're new to my class, that you transfer in from another teacher, from another school, or whatever, I'm not going to require you to be keeping up on that. State math contest. State math contest is coming up. Um, April 25th. Uh, 2016, because this year. That is a Monday. And it's being held at BYU this year. It is an all-day event. We do a field trip there. It's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, I think, that we meet up for the bus. And then we get back, usually, last year we got back just before 3 o'clock, just before the uh, bus arrived, or before uh, the bus arrived, just before the bell rang. Um, this year, I would imagine we'll be able to do the same thing, especially because this year we have a bus to ourselves. Last year we were sharing a bus with another school. Since we have a bus to ourselves, that'll make it easier for us to uh, meet it back up and get back up here quicker. So, plan on that. Um, three good things. If you have anything... Uh, Good, we share, you know. Let me know the good things going on. It's, I'm always excited to hear cool things that my kids are up to. We've got track, we've got track starting up next week. Uh, the tryouts for that are on Monday. We've got uh, track conditioning going on right now. Um, school musical is coming up that it's starting its heavy practice stuff next week. Um, me and my state trip kids, we're building the scenery for the musical on Saturday. It's going to be awesome. We've got a variety of awesome things going on. So... Let me know the cool things you have going on, all right? Oh, and my good thing was the musical scenery and all that, because I enjoy that a lot. 
Okay, I want to show a mistake that I kept on seeing on the quiz that I, want, that I felt was worth discussing. So this y equals 2x minus 5, we start at negative 5, go up 2 and to the right 1. Most people did pretty good with that. Occasionally I have people that might go up 1 to the right 2, that would be wrong. It's always up, then right. Always do the up or down first, then to the right. If you do it in the other order, it's really easy to get confused and mess it up. So, get a great line like that. And then y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 5. I had a lot of people who got confused on this one and wanted to go down for the negative and then left for the 2. So down 1, right 2. Notice that that makes a positive slope though. That if we go left to right, which is how you read a graph. You read a graph left to right, the same way you read an equation. Or the same way you read a sentence. Um, if you go from left to right, it goes up and right, which is the same as a positive slope. So that's kind of wrong. Uh, on the quiz, if you had a mistake like that, the real thing I wanted to test is how well you identified your intersections, how well you identified the solution to the system of equations. That's what was worth the most on this quiz. So that was a minus one mistake if you had a line that was going the wrong way. Sort of silly thing to do, but not that bad. Um, here's where it got worse, though. Um, I'd then have people would see this and they would say, no solution. Take a second and just think about that. Why would that be a bad idea to put no solution? Why is that such a wrong answer here? Pause the video to think about it for a second. Okay, the reason that's so wrong is that no solution is when it's parallel, when the lines will never cross. If you look at these two lines, they will eventually cross. They're going to cross eventually, and that means that there is a solution. Honestly, if someone had written, there is a solution, but it's not on the graph, I might have accepted that uh, as an answer. Um, for the graph that we're seeing here, this is a very good answer. It goes off of our graph, we don't have room for it, and I can totally see putting that. That makes sense to me. This does not. And so what ended up happening is that people have one mis that have a little mistake here, then make a bigger mistake when they say no solution. You're better off, one, well, okay, you're best off looking at this and saying, wait a second, Mr. Olson would not give me a problem where it goes off the graph. It has to be since it's on the graph, then you might catch that you should have had a negative, it goes down and to the right, giving you this line, which indeed has a solution at four, Three. X equals four, Y equals three. Anyway, just want to talk about that a little bit that just because they don't cross does not mean it's no solution. If they're going to cross off the graph, that will still have a solution, and you shouldn't treat it as a no solution. Um, and it's a great way to catch your mistake because I don't tend to give you problems that you can't do with the graphs I give you. I make sure that there's room on the graph for whatever you're doing. Okay, substitution. That is our big deal today. Sorry to do the graphing there, but substitution. Substitution is replacing something with something else. Think about that. Think of, try to think of examples from real life, not from math class, where you replace something with something else. You might come up with, so pause the video, try to think of at least one example. You, we're back. You may have thought of sports. In sports, quite often, a player gets tired, they're not playing very well, maybe they're in, uh, they have a penalty against them, and so uh, they are substituted with somebody else. Uh, so sports, classic example. Uh, teachers, substitute teachers. You have a teacher who leaves, and another teacher comes to replace them for a day. Um, or for two days, or whatever, you know? Um, I used to be a substitute teacher, it was fun, I enjoyed it. Baking, cooking, when you cook stuff, sometimes you substitute something for something else that maybe you're out of an ingredient, so you use a replacement ingredient instead. Um, or it may be that you want to maybe make it healthier by replacing something with something else. Me, I quite often substitute margarine for butter because uh, margarine has less fat than butter. And so for me, I feel like I'm a bit healthier that way. And yeah, my mom's really big on substituting things to make recipes healthier. Now, with substitution in real life, usually replacing something with something else, we want it to be as close to the same as possible. We wouldn't substitute out, uh, say, LeBron James and substitute in, I don't know, uh, Peyton Manning. That wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't play the same sport and probably, I'm going to guess that Peyton Manning's not on the correct roster to be a substitution in a basketball game. Um, you wouldn't substitute out a, with teachers, as much as possible, try to make it uh, someone that you can do the same stuff that you do. 
Uh, me, when I was a sub, there was, uh, I had a really good friend that he was a math teacher. And so whenever he needed a substitute teacher, he would call me up and I would go in and sub for him. And we would try to arrange it so that I teach almost exactly the same way that he did. And that was a good substitution. Um, other times he would need a different sub, and sometimes those subs maybe didn't know the math as well, so that wouldn't be as good of a substitution. Uh, and that can be frustrating. I mean, for me, when I would sub for science classes, that'd be frustrating because I don't know science as well. And so that'd be frustrating both for me and for the students and for the teacher that uh, I'd go and teach a science lesson and maybe I don't know it as well. And so for my friend as a math teacher, if he had a teacher that didn't know math, that could be sort of a hard thing for him. Um, baking. When you replace uh, margarine with butter with margarine, you do lose a little bit of flavor there. Um, even if it's a bit healthier, you lose a bit of flavor on that. So, yeah, there's always sort of a drawback on substitution, with the one exception of math. Replacing something else that's equal. And that's the key thing in math, that you can only substitute something that's equal. And we can do something that's exactly equal. In basketball, when we substitute out LeBron James and put in someone else that plays the same position, they are not equal. They're not players that are equal. Um, yeah, uh, when we substitute out uh, something in a recipe, it's not going to be something that's exactly equal. It may taste mostly the same. Heck, the example I use, uh, I usually don't have um, regular milk, dairy milk on hand. Tech, usually I use uh, soy milk. Um, I don't tend to get enough protein in my diet, so I drink soy milk because it has more protein. Um, some recipes, that works just fine if I use soy milk. Other things, it does not work very well at all. If I'm making my macaroni and cheese, soy milk works all right. It gives it a bit of a sweet taste I don't love, but I can deal with it. If I'm making French toast, soy milk doesn't work very well at all. If I'm making scrambled eggs, back French, anything involving eggs, soy milk doesn't work as well. In math, it's pretty cool that we can substitute something with something else that is exactly equal. That's what we did in the world up here that we replaced the A with 4 because A equals 4. We replaced the B with 3 because B equals 3. We replaced the C with 2 because C equals 2. Pretty neat opportunity, and we're going to now see how we can use that to solve systems of equations. Here I have two equations, x equals 5 and y equals 2x minus 3. Some people might argue this is not an equation. It is. It has an equals in it. It has something equals to something else. It is an equation. So, let's see how we'd substitute that. Try on your own just Pause the video for, let's say, 30 seconds. See if you can think of a way to substitute this to find what y is equal to. Pause the video. And we are back. Hopefully you came up with the equation y equals 2 times 5 minus 3. Let's look at how that works. We have that x equals 5, so we replace the x with a 5. And then we keep the rest of the equation the same. Just because we substitute something does not change too much else. Um, if we substitute out a basketball player and put in a different basketball player, that doesn't change which other players are on the court, or where the basketball hoops are at, or other things like that. But the rest of it stays the same. If we substitute something in a recipe, we substitute butter for margarine. That does not mean we have to change everything in the recipe, just we change the butter and margarine. Really, you're better off not changing more than one thing in a recipe. When we substitute out one teacher, that does not mean we substitute out all the other teachers or that the classroom changes to a different location. No, it stays the same. Besides what we substitute, the rest of it stays the same. Once we substitute it, and this is the cool thing in math, it gives us better options. Whereas in a sport, it might be frustrating to substitute out Stephen Curry for somebody else because they're probably not going to play Stephen Curry as well as Stephen Curry does. In math, now we can multiply those together, giving us a 10 minus 3. And then we can solve that 10 minus 3, that's 7. Substitution of math has given us this whole new opportunity to find what y is equal to. Isn't that great? Um, now our answer in a system of equations should be of the form x equals something, y equals something, and then the point. So in this problem, our answer would be x equals 5, y equals 7, and our point, 5 comma 7. Just because you have that x equals 5 here does not mean that that's automatically your answer. Or that I know that's your answer. On the quiz on this, you'll need to make sure that you put in an answer space, in the answer space, that x equals 5. If you don't do that, then you're not getting full credit. Um, and same with that y equals 7. Just because you did your work over here that showed that y equals 7 does not mean that I'm going to be giving you full credit on that if you don't uh, tell me that that's your answer. Try out this one here. This time I'm giving you what y is equal to. See if you can find uh, what x is equal to and write your answer as a point. Pause the video. Okay, we are back. Hopefully you came up with the equation 
6 equals 2x minus 4. This is done pretty much the same. We have y equals 6. We replace the y with the 6. The rest of it stays the same. All this other stuff here equals 2x minus 4, equals 2x minus 4. That really stayed exactly the same. Add 4 to each side. So 10 equals 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 5. And then we still have y equals 6. One of the saddest things I see on these quizzes is I see students, they get x equals 5, then they plug that back into this equation to find y. Um, sometimes they make mistakes doing that, so the y that they already had, they end up getting it wrong. So I recommend as soon as you see a problem where I give you the x or the y, write that down in your answer space. Maybe circle it, highlight it, make it clear that that is your answer, that is part of your answer. So, the quiz, and we'll have a quiz on this next time on Thursday, April 7th. <laughs> Had to look at my calendar there. Um, the quiz will have a problem where I give you the x and a problem where I give you the y. That, those problems aren't worth as many points as the ones that will be trickier, but try these out on your own, all right? Try out these two problems, uh, finding in this one what y equals and this one what x equals. And I will give you the answer, but you need to do the work. If you're trying to admit that work, then you're not getting full credit. So you should get on this one by the end, y equals negative 19. And on this one, you should get x equals 3. But I need to see the work that you did to do that. Pause the video, do it. If you get those right answers, great, way to go. By the way, on the quiz, I need to see the substitution step. Honestly, a problem like this would be worth four points. Two of those points would be from showing this substitution step right here. Um, yeah. That's one of the most key things on this quiz is that you substitute correctly. And on a problem like this, two of the points would be just from this substitution step right here. Uh, the other points would come from identifying your, solving your thing and getting your answer correct. Um, yeah. So, um, that's that. Problem number 12. Look at this one, it is different. It is different, isn't it? See if you can think of uh, how to do this. Um, pause the video, figure out how to do this. We're back. Did you figure out a way? If you did it, here's a hint. We're doing the exact same thing we did here. We have y equals something, y equals something else. We replace the y here with that 6, because y equals 6. See if you can figure out how you to do the same thing on this one. Pause the video. Okay, we're back. Maybe you figured it out, maybe you didn't. Uh, let me show you the equation that I would come up with on this problem. I would say 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. Now, if you came up with the equation 2x plus 5 equals 4x minus 3, that is a perfectly valid equation. It's an okay equation, and I am totally fine with it. Um, I like this one better, though. I find that students solve equations better that have the larger number x on the left side. Let's look at how we get either of these. For this one, I would take this, two, this equation here, I'd replace the y with what y equals 4x minus 3. I keep that 2x plus 5 the same though. So notice that equals 2x plus 5 on the right side stays the same, and we add in a 4x minus 3 on the left. Okay, um, 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. This, you just do the opposite, that we take this equation and replace that y with what y equals. Everything we are doing today is substitution, replacing something with something else that is equal. In this case, the y with what the y is equal to. Now we subtract 2x from each side. So we get 2x minus 3 equals 5. Add 3 to each side. 2x equals 8. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x equals 4. Are we done yet? Hopefully you just said no because we still need to find y. We found x, now we need to find y. Now if this was the actual quiz, I would right away when you find x, put it into your answer space. x equals something, y equals something. Um, and then I also want you to write your answers as a point because it's important to be aware of uh, all, both ways of writing the answer. We can take, think about how we can get y now that we know x. Pause the video. Hopefully you just came up with the idea we can take that 4 and plug it into this equation or this equation. Really, both is a good idea, because then you can check that you get the same answer from both. If you plug it into both equations and get two different answers, that means that you got the wrong number for x. That means you have a mistake somewhere. Okay, let's look at this top equation. We put in a 2 for x, or 4 for x. 
We're going to have y equals 2 times 4 plus 5. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 5. y equals 13. So our point would be 4 comma 13. Yay. If we wanted to check our answer, another way we could check it, we could put the uh, 4 into this one and check that we get the same thing. Or we could put the 4 and the 13 into that one. So we'd have 13 for the y equals 4 times 4 for the x minus 3. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 3. 13 minus 16 minus 3. 13 equals 13. When you check your solutions, this is what I want to see. I want to see a substitution. Do we replace the y with the 13? Do we replace the x with the 4? And I want to see that you work it through to the point that you have a number that's the same on each side. If you have not done that, then you have not checked your answer completely. Try out 13 and 14 following the same method we did here. Again, that method, replace the y in one equation with what it equals in the other. Solve that, find x, plug x back in to find y. Try these two out. Pause the video. And we are back. So let's set this up. On this first one, I would set it up 2x minus 10 equals negative 3x plus 5. Um, if you had set it up negative 3x plus 5 equals 2x minus 10, it means the same thing, works the same way, you'd even follow the same steps to solve it, but you would be more likely to make a mistake. People make more, like, less mistakes solving an equation with a larger number of x on the left side. One of those odd facts, but I have seen it time and time again as a teacher. Okay, so let's solve this equation. If you did not get this equation correct, pause the video now and try solving it on your own to find x and put the x back in to find y. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, so now we add 3x to each side. That's our first step to solving this. It gives us 5x minus 10 equals 5. Add 10 to each side. So 5x equals 15. Divide by 5, you get x equals 3. If you solved it for x and got a different number than 3, right now, pause the video, use that 3 to find your y by putting it into one of those top equations. Okay, we're back. So, y equals 2 times 3 minus 10. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 10. y equals negative 4. So we get the point 3 comma negative 4. Let's try substituting that into the top equation to check our answer. So, uh, I'm going to replace the x with this 3. I'm going to replace the y with that negative 4, which gives me the equation negative 4 equals negative 3 times 3 plus 5. Negative 3 times 3, that would be negative 9 plus 5. Negative 9 plus 5, that is negative 4. So we have negative 4 equals negative 4. Yay. This one here, let's try this one out. So you should have gotten for your equation something like x plus 5 equals x minus 3. You could have also had x minus 3 equals x plus 5. Since you have the same number of x, it doesn't matter which order you put it in. Um, no one way is better than the other. So, we need to get rid of either the x or the other x. Remember, we always get rid of the smaller unknown. Here we got rid of the negative 3 instead of the positive 2. Here we got rid of the 2 instead of the 4. Always get rid of the smaller unknown. So, we subtract x from each side. 5 equals negative 3. Those are not equal. So, our new equation is, or so this equation has no solution. Yeah. Remember that when we were graphing them, that if they were parallel and never crossed, there would be no solution? Same deal here. If we graph these, they'd be parallel, they would never cross. Or in the algebra, we uh, end up having them that uh, you get two things that don't equal each other. No solution. Try out number 15 and 16 here. I'll get you started on 16, um, but 15 you'll be doing completely on your own. So pause the video, do these on your own. We're back, and like I said, 15 on your own. 16, I'll go over with you. So 16, you should get an equation, 6x equals 2x plus 8. Some people got a bit confused here because there wasn't a number on that side. We can still solve it the same way. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. Gives you 4x equals 8. And I bet the rest of it you can solve on your own. So if you were stuck at that step, do that now. Hope this makes sense. Um, talk to me if it doesn't, all right? We will have a quiz on this next time. I will go over a lot of examples, especially of these type where it's too equations that are a bit more complicated, where I didn't just hand you an answer like we did in the earlier problems. They are all, though, still the same. They are replacing something with what it is equal to. Always replacing something with what it's equal to. That is substitution. I think I'm pointing at substitution right now. I can't quite tell because my camera is... Anyway, have a good one. See you later. Bye.